This morning we were heading towards an Airbnb just outside of Oslo so that tomorrow we could get the rear tyres changed on our bikes. As anticipated, the weather was horrendous so we were just happy that we had a nice warm accommodation waiting for us at the end of a three hour ride from Odder. After a very soggy journey, we rolled up to the Airbnb, absolutely buzzing to have such a beautiful space to spend a night and recharge our batteries to tackle the next leg of our trip. It was nice to get a decent meal in our bellies and chill on a sofa fighting our eyes open to stay awake so we could just make the most out of this place. The next morning we headed into Oslo to get our tyres fitted. For whatever reason they didn't have a bike stand so Mitch had to come up with a makeshift way to get the back wheels off the bike. I'm still gritting my teeth looking at this even though I know how it went. After two long hours of staring at the propped up bike and drinking as much coffee as we could, we were ready to head into Sweden. Reunited with our two loves last night, the lean to shelter and the lakes, and it's good to be back. We've just had breakfast here. I'll show you where we're camped up. We're just camped up here next to this pontoon for the lake, the lean to shelters all the way down there. It's really nice to have these sorts of campsites back and for there to be hardly anyone about. We did try a couple of these lean-to shelters before we decided on this one last night because whereas in Finland, it's a little bit more hilly here and a lot of the lean-to shelters are on banks, which is making it hard to put the tent down. So that might be something that we have issues with, but we're yet to see. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> happy to be back in there. Yeah, I didn't realise how much we had missed this until we got here yesterday and I felt like there was just like a big sigh of relief from me. Like this morning I was on the dock, did a little bit of stretching and then there's just silence and we can just be here for as long as we want, have a picnic bench. Just little things like that which I've realised on when you're off the bike make the experience a lot better. We've made it so that... The time that we're in Sweden, we've got plenty of time to relax as well. I think we've only got around a thousand kilometres of riding to reach Denmark and we've given ourselves a week and a day, I think, to do that. So that's loads and loads of time. We've got to that point of the trip now where we're both sort of getting a few little niggles with our body. My bum is absolutely killing. I think I've like got a knot from sitting on that hard seat. I was trying to massage it out with a log this morning. So yeah, we'll see how we get on being back off road. It's time to air down again, which I'm quite excited about. I'm really looking forward to going off road as well. I think you are as well, aren't you? Yeah. And we've got fresh tires on as you've seen. So we'll see how these get on as well. What we're planning on riding over the next week is section three, well a tiny bit of section three which is what we're on now, section two and section one of the Trans Euro Trail, about a thousand kilometres. I, the, Sweden is the place that we've done the least research on, we have no idea what the train's going to be like, we suspect it's going to be fairly similar to Finland but I, I have no idea. 
one thing we're going to be doing is taking it a little bit slower because I know the Swedish Transjura Trail is a lot more popular than the Finnish Transjura Trail so we should be expecting oncoming traffic at all times so no flying down any single lanes because that could lead to big problems. I'm excited to see what this TT is going to be like and people rave about the Swedish TT a lot more than they did with the Finland one so it's kind of rogue for us to go for Finland at the start of the trip because a lot of people do Sweden instead so I'm excited to compare the two and also get back onto the off-road trails after being for the past two weeks on just pure tarmac. <laughs> The gravel that we're on at the minute is fairly loose and I'm trying to figure out at the minute if I trust this rear tyre as much as I trusted the last one. It's, um, at the minute, I don't know if I'm liking it as much. I can't tell if it's because I've been off the gravel for a while so I'm not used to it moving underneath me so much or it does have something to do with the the tyre. But at the moment, my confidence has definitely been dropped a little bit. Just how much I'm sliding everywhere. Yeah, I don't think I like this tyre as much as the old one. I wonder if Sweden is going to be like Goldilocks's porridge. Where... <laughs> because in Finland, I feel like it was it was dead there was no one around like we were the only tracks that we were making and then the two other guys that we we saw were following like no one else on the on the roads at all norway complete opposite every man and his dog every motorhome was on the roads just busy people doing stuff everywhere whereas in sweden already we've seen two cyclists walkers people driving and I'm wondering if it's going to be like the sweet spot in between the two. Well, I liked it when there was no one here. Fuck it out! <laughs> you liked it when there was no one at all? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Coming off road again also means a lot more of this. Mitch <laughs> trying to work out the map on his phone. We use an app called Osmond. To navigate with the GPX files that we've got in in Norway, we're using Google Maps, obviously. Well, no, the main reason I'm messing with the map now. Oh, I've just realised why it's not going to work for us. Because the sections going the other way into it, like it, the the normal route is north, we're going south. I don't know. Oh yeah, reverse track direction. There you go. You can do it. Never mind. Yeah, the main reason why I'm messing about with it now is because we've got little back. Hey! I'm so excited. <laughs> so um, the first thing that we're doing is heading towards a little in this next town. So we can actually eat some proper food that's not going to cost us an arm and a leg. And make Martha cry. Oh. <laughs> Little bakery, here I come! Here we go! <laughs> Charlottenburg. Five for a coffee, five for a hot dog. I think it was about four times that price in Norway. And the price of the fuel as well. The last place we filled up in Norway, once every train we're going, was 24 which is like £1.90. The exchange rate's very similar here to in Norway. So that means that that's like one pound, uh, what'll that be, 13. It's like £1.40 for a litre. That's actually ridiculous. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. We're gonna have to go all the way around. That was a nice tour of the place, wasn't it? 
Uh, yeah, I actually saw so much more. There was a diner. <laughs> now I've got the three owls back in my life. Lean twos, lakes, and little. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's good, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that little kid just came running over, fascinated by the bike. Oh, bless him. If he comes back out when we're here, maybe I'll give him a cheeky wheelie. Well, Lidl was a huge success. We've got ourselves a feta burek and some other baked goods. We had a lot of fun in there. And we've just pulled over from the main road to just this little section where we could just have something to eat in the shade as it's got very warm all of a sudden, which is quite nice to be honest, after the weather we had in Norway. So we're just gonna sit here and eat and enjoy. We have just been here for, oh! <laughs> That's why you get on where the, on the side with the side stand. Oh my god, I've never used so much strength in all my life. <laughs> why did you try and get on that way? I couldn't be able to walk around. What I was going to say is, yeah, we've been here for way too long. We got here at 10 past two, just to have a quick stop for lunch. It's now 20 to four. And do you want to know the reason for that? Well, let me tell you. The weather. The weather has once again put a spanner in the works although it doesn't look like it now tomorrow it's give 35 mil of rain and thunderstorms and we were gonna just tent and we were like that's we were happy with that but then we realized we won't be able to film any of it and it'll be a wasted day of riding tt and we can't even film anything we'll just get wet the tent will be wet so anyway we've booked an airbnb which was only £36 for the night, which is a really good deal. Half of what we've been paying. But it has meant that it's put us in a position of like where tonight we don't really have anywhere to stay. So we're just going to be on the lookout basically because all the shelters aren't going to work out for us. Yeah, all the shelters that we've been trying to find <laughs> there's just a dead patch of them on where we ideally need to stay tonight so we're not going to have a shelter tonight unfortunately but we are going to try and still find a good spot to enjoy the rest of the dry day today before packing up in the rain tomorrow on this ride to find somewhere to spend the night, we had a bit of a realisation with our thoughts and feelings about riding through Sweden, and specifically on the TET, which we will go into much more detail within the next episode. It will ultimately carve a path for the rest of our trip, but for now we were milling our way through the countryside like two nodding dogs, looking for anywhere we could pitch up our tent for the night. Oh, this is a funny turn of events. I think we'll get parked up and uh, explain it to you. Right, yeah, let's turn around. Oh yeah, look, welcome to Bang Skog. Firewood drinking water and privy available on farm. Well, the day could not have turned <laughs> to be in our favour any more than it did. We had had this place starred for a while to come to. I'd seen them on a video, seen them on Instagram, and it's part of the TUT as well. And it's a place called Mangwood Inn. I'll pop their details below but it's on the route and Mitch didn't have the pins on for what I'd already put on for our maps on for the GPS so he didn't see it and I recognised the sign as we went past this big TT sign and then I was like I swear that's the place so then we got up the road checked turned around and it was and then we've just been speaking uh, to the lovely lady that runs this place and yeah basically it's free for anyone who's coming along we are currently now up there top section she said this is used to be a, her old like horse paddock i think that's what it's called um but it's just really nice spongy grass now and we were going to stay down the bottom but then like i said she had up here so we've come up here set up our tent in the background which you can see there is three other riders here already i think they're from sweden so they're set up in the like 
barbecue in the area. There's also a couple of cabins here. The lake that we can see just there, there's also a dock for that. Then there's a toilet, there's drinking water. It actually just works out perfectly for us and I couldn't be happier for this situation because I really didn't know where we were going to camp tonight. <laughs> so it's like the universe heard us and was like, look at that massive TET sign as you go past. <laughs> so yeah, we're set up here and the sun's out. I'm in a t-shirt. Feels really good. How chuffed are you? Very. <laughs> it's short lived though, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's going to be pissing down tomorrow. Sounds like there's some more riders now. I didn't realise how popular it was. Well, it's a, there's a reason why it's popular, isn't it? Yeah. I feel as well like this is like the first time we've properly been sat out in any sort of sun, just chilling. Like we've set up camp. We, we we're all we're all done, and it's not even late. I feel it feels nice to be done early and actually being able to enjoy Are this. You I've got homes, I know. <laughs> what are these? <laughs> what are these? I haven't got legs though, I've still got my thermals on. <laughs> Underneath my trousers. But yeah, this it feels really nice. This feels like proper camping when we're out like this. We will go and be sociable, I think, but we also need to make some dinner. Not yet. Not yet. But... Oh yeah, you haven't said. Martha's like a bloody kid. And then Lidl, she's like, oh, there's nothing more that I'd want than a pick and mix. I really want a pick and mix. So we've both got a pick and mix and we ate most of that at lunch, so I'm not that hungry. <laughs> if anyone else grew up with pick and mix being way too expensive for you to be allowed, when we were in this Lidl, it was so expensive in Norway. And then at this Lidl, it wasn't actually that bad. We got two bags, so one each, and it was £3.50, which, bargain. You're not going to eat one now after you just said you're full. Swedish fish. This is something that you've not seen from us for a very long time. We've actually got some green shit on our plate. <laughs> it's all thanks to Lidl. I love Lidl. Do you want to explain what we've got? I got pak choy, onion, pork, and then we've done the pork with barbecue seasoning, honey and soy sauce and I've properly marinated it in a bag. It looks really good. With jasmine rice. Oh yeah, do a little sprinkle. Oh yeah. It seems like every single time we take precautionary measures because of the weather, we start to regret it. But the weather is meant to change later. So hopefully this Airbnb was the right choice because we've got too many on this trip for my liking really. But yeah. I think it's the smart option. It seems sad to say like, I'm not really looking forward to it because I feel like we've just reset and we actually do enjoy camping, although it might not seem it because we seem to just be in Airbnbs all the time. <laughs> so. I'm kind of sad about that, but then also, if the weather is still correct about that 35 mil and the thunderstorm, that's when camping's not fun. But right now, it's pretty nice. It's warm and it's dry, so let's hope the weather actually comes in. It really was a blessing being able to stay here last night. It's amazing that someone's offering this for free. I'm not 100% sure why she does it. She maybe she just enjoys the company, enjoys helping people, but um, it's definitely done us a massive favour. Thankfully for our sanity, the bad weather did start to roll in and by the time we reached the Airbnb, the rain was pretty heavy. Oh, how are you meant to not get a pizza when you've parked here? Should we just have pizza for lunch? They put fries on top of all their pizzas too. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss what Sweden has in store for us next. We'll see you then.